I'm here at the Mayan booth with Malad, uh, at a booth that really like blew away my expectations on what I thought I would see here at CES. Um, talk to me about Mayan and what Mayan does. Sure thing. So at Mayan, um, we are the pioneers in smart textile developments. Uh, we're creating a continuous monitoring of individuals through textiles which we all interact with. Uh, we break out the day into three segments of 888. So you have eight hours at home where we can monitor you through your garments that you wear at home, the garments you interact with, like your fabrics in your bed, your seats, flooring. Eight hours at work. Um, again, depending on where you work, if, if you work in an office, the same idea, the floor, um, the flooring, the seats, um, the, the fabrics on your t table blotter if you have, or if you're working off-site in, in, in a work site, the garments that you wear that can heat you up, light you, and then eight hours, leisure. So if you're camping, if you're doing sports and athletics, we can capture those biometrics. And the way we view it is, we're all individuals standing, and we're constantly beaming data, and that data is being uncaptured. And we want to create a quantified understanding of that individual through the garments and through the textiles that they interact with. And so we're talking about textiles. I think that's like it's underselling how rad this stuff is, right? Because this is all custom knit textiles with uh, embedded wiring and electronic elements, uh, battery systems, maybe microcontrollers, um, and a lot of that, like I see a lot of wearable projects that come bubbling up through the maker world and the hobbyist world, um, and a lot of that's it's glue and Velcro and wires and hope, but what you guys are doing is you're actually weaving the elements into the fabric. Talk to me about that process. Sure, sure. So yeah, there are a lot of cool uh, maker projects of this, and that's kind of where I started when I got into it. I was obviously on Instructables and all these different websites, watching people that are doing arts and crafts projects and developing it. The uniqueness of what we've done is, we've taken all those processes and we've made it a manufacturing process. And one differentiation of why we were able to get to this point is, we realized that we have to do everything from beginning to end. And when I say beginning, I mean from the beginning, which is the raw materials, the yarns, and we have to produce them. And I, over here, we have an example of this process. Yeah, show us some of the, uh, the materials that we are, you're working with. So, where, when we do our developments, we begin with the yarns and the core fibers that you described that we weave, we knit, or we embroider. So we can produce yarns, we either extrude them, we either coat them or we wrap them based on the specific application that we need. And then we go into producing them in a through a textile production uh, method. Um, and we kind of call it like textile PCBs, the same way that you can print a PCB board. We're doing the same thing through the textile processes to create a PCB on textile. So over here you have examples of some of the yarns that we produce, obviously going from the raw components, those, those polymeric pellets, those master batches that we create and we turn it into the yarns. We can have different processes of knitting them, um, embroidering them, weaving them, or even doing, in some cases, as you might have seen, laminations on the textiles, but you still need that rooting and that wiring in the textile to be able to take that signal uh, from one point to the electronics. And we should also mention at this point, too, that you guys manufacture the, the knitting machine. No, no, we don't manufacture the knitting machine. We actually partner with Stoll, which is a knitting, uh, a flatbed knitting manufacturing uh, producer from Germany, and we have worldwide exclusive on smart textile developments with them. But with Stoll, we are developing custom machinery to be able to develop these garments, but also take our yarns, because the yarns that we're producing are very highly specialized yarns with different properties that can't just go through every um, conventional process. Some of them can get damaged in the procedure. And second, we're working on another development with them where we can embed electronics during the knitting process in the fabric. So it's fully sealed and you don't have uh, the need to put or take out electronics um, leading to the end objective of, for example, one underwear is one of our, you know, uh, our key product that we're launching this year where you don't have to have habit change. You just wear your underwear and you're good to go and the electronics are already embedded in the side of it. The first generation, you have to take it out to charge it, but in future generations, it will be all embedded within and through wireless charging, you just charge the underwear. Interesting. Okay, now walk me through some of these other processes that are uh, involved in how you're manufacturing these garments. One of the things I was interested to see were the uh, the electrodes or how you're building up um, the the actual contact points in the garment to be able to monitor uh, whoever's wearing it. For sure. So it, it's it's very key. Um, the key component of this development is the electrode itself. Um, any individual that's done electrophysiology is com uh, has, has worked with a common gel electrode and it's a new paradigm shift going from wet electrodes to dry electrodes. There's a lot of research around it, a lot of individuals have done work on it, research has been published, but those electrodes haven't gone through the rigor of everyday wearing, 
wear and tear, washing, drying, and seeing, okay, is this going to last and it's going to give me the same signal uh, fidelity and sensitivity that I had from day one. And that was one of the biggest challenges that we had from the beginning in producing the system. So not only the materials, but the knitting structure itself really dictates um, on the homogeneity, on the density, and on the signal attenuation, and how we layer the electrode to be able to collect the signal, transmit the signal, and pass it through. So that is one of the patterns, our, our IP, that we have on the electrode development. You can see some of the developments here. Obviously, we don't cut it through, so you can see exactly what we've done, but this is a key component. And then pairing with the electrode and the materials that we have, it's very important to have the electronics that are specific to those uh, materials. Depending on the impedance of the skin, um, different skin tones, different skin properties, based on age and regions, uh, climates can really vary uh, those properties. With a gel electrode, because you have that wet um, gel component reducing the impedance, you have not to, you don't have to worry about it much. But when you go to dry electrodes, that becomes an issue, and the electronics is very important. We tune the electronics to those materials to ensure that we get a um, high fidelity signal. Well, uh, one thing I, I, I was like marveling at when I was looking at this was the both the look of them because they, the electrodes don't even they look like little buttons almost or something like an element, almost like a design element exactly. in the garment. But also, I was reading about how you, uh, there was a, a deliberate attempt to make the, the material inside of that electrode with, with hydrophilic or like be able to absorb moisture. We were joking the other day about how like, most garments don't just, you know, brag about how much they can absorb moisture. Usually, it's repelling it. Uh, talk to me about how that uh, help is helpful for the electrode. Sure. So depending on some of the applications, um, obviously, some people want to wick moisture. That's a big thing. but. Since we're acquiring signals, moisture, as I mentioned, gel electrodes reduce the impedance. And in some cases, we want to maintain a certain level of moisture at the electrode, whether it's for electrophysiology uh, signal collection or if it's for applications such as electric stimulation, as you can see on the wall over there, where we activate the motor neurons through the garment to stimulate and create either a full muscle contraction or we just stimulate the regionally like tens. Um, so through that fabric structure, where over here we're talking about active electrodes, meaning we have to pass an electrical signal to them to get their functionality out of it. We have some yarns and materials that we developed that are passive. So through the material properties, we achieve a certain um, feature. In this case, we call it the capillary effect, where we take hydrophilic and hydrophobic structures and channel and move the fluid through the body from different points, from sweat or moisture, from one point to another, to reduce the impedance and to improve signal quality. This is incredible. I, this is a whole world that I just have not been like attuned to at all. All right, now back to electronics. Uh, you'd mentioned finding ways to embed the electronics in the garment. Uh, it looks like the, the story here kind of goes from large to small, right? As you obviously people don't want big chunky Arduinos or microcontrollers <laughs> hanging off <laughs> hanging off of uh, off of their shirt. Um, how talk to me about this journey from something starting big with something kind of conventional off the shelf and getting it down as small as possible. So. Any engineering development, you know, you have a process, and, and the process that we follow is the TRL um, kind of scale, technology readiness level. So at the beginning, we just want to validate to make sure the functionality is there. So it doesn't matter to us if the electronics is the size of a laptop. As long as it works and we can ensure that the garment is doing what it's supposed to do, we're happy with it. And then we go into miniaturization. As you can see, we start from very large size electronics, and then we go down to something size of probably like even smaller than a credit card, and that will allow us to embed it in the garment. Now the embedding is also very important because the transition from a soft fabric to a hard electronics um, is really key, not only on the point of ensuring that the contact is intimate so you don't have any signal loss, but also as you're wearing a garment, you're stretching it, you don't want to rip the connection, you don't want to, when you drop into the washing machine, comes out, you see things are broken. So building the mechanical connectors, as you can see, we initially just start with wires, collecting the signals, plugging it into the computer, seeing if it works, but then we start iterating on different designs on the mechanical, through uh, the, the pogo plug systems or like the little systems, pins and we have a partnership with SMK on that where we're developing you know uh, what you would call proprietary connectors to be able to transmit the signal and have it withstand all the use and wear and tear and washability that you have um, and this system has to transmit the power and be able to transmit the data so again, it's a very unique development and how you attach that to the textile is again, one of the areas that you know, we've been working on for a couple of years and um, kind of differentiates rather than something you just clip on or snap on as you've seen with just regular buttons, we have our own proprietary connector. It's a lot of, lot of cool things for anyone who's making wearables to consider if they're wanting to level up their design a little bit. Now I want to walk over to one of the most 
steampunk looking uh, yeah, yes. wearables over here and have you talk to me if you can about this. This guy's got way too many wires coming out of him. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what's going on in this particular garment? For sure, so everything over there that we described is great. So what? And this is a so what, uh, what we can achieve. Over here we have a full um, AR, VR suit um, and system. So the garment that you see here can capture full biomechanics. We have stretch sensors and IMUs embedded across the body on different portions from your uh, limbs to your trunk. So you can capture full body biomechanics as you're kind of in an AR VR environment. Right now you're limited to cameras and holding the controllers. Um, with the cameras you're limited within the confined area that you have the cameras catching you and if there's blind spots. But this system will allow you to be anywhere. Um, similar to, I forgot that movie, the player one set, what it was, the ready player one. This is exactly the same kind of garment. This garment right now only has biomechanics and capturing the movement, but in the next generation we're going to be adding haptics, so then as you're in that environment you can interact with it, so that's a, you know, a coming, coming feature. Right. Now, the, now, if I'm coming around the back here, it looks like there's like a harness or some kind yeah, of system so back is, here. This is the kind of the addition, so this is probably people will say, okay, so what, there's a lot of motion capture systems. This is the cool part where we built a full EEG system that can capture um, your EEG from this headband. You can put any um, AR, VR headset on top, Oculus, Vive, or even a, a HoloLens uh, system. We capture your EEG to understand what level of cognitive loading you have while you're in that AR, VR world. We have an occipital lobe electrode that can capture your eye movement as you're in the AR, VR world, so we understand where you're looking, because you can't put a camera inside the, in the AR, VR headset to see where the person's focus is. We capture blood pressure through a PPG sensor, so we know what level of uh, basically stress that individual is in. We have galvanic skin response to detect, um, again, another input to detect, a multimodality input to detect um, the level of stress the person is under, temperature, ECG, and breathing rate. So you can imagine, up to now, in an AR, in AR VR world, people are just a kind of a shadow of a uh, avatar that just moves with it. Now we're trying to embed the individual in there, not just uh, biomechanically, but as much as we can physiologically. So if you and I are interacting in an AR, VR world, if you look at me, if I'm, for example, stressed, or if I'm, my emotional state can be translated. And that's kind of what we're doing. That whole concept quantified self, uh, that you know is becoming very big through all these sensory systems on body. We're trying to realize that. So in some sense, I, I, I kind of joke around the work, I say it, it is the matrix where you're fully connected, you can be embedded in that world, whether you're an able-bodied individual or someone with a disability, you might not have movement, but you can at least cerebrally be in that world and we can capture and understand what's going on with you. One application is AR, VR, but we're also looking at areas in rehab, in training, and so on and so forth. It's cool. It's the most William Gibson-y thing I think <laughs> I've seen at this show. Now, one other technique I kind of came upon here, maybe this swatch over here talks about it or shows it off best, is that a lot of the connections you seem to be making on the material are ultrasonic welds, right? Talk to me about the advantage of using that kind of technique compared to soldering or buttons or what else you might use. So over here we're just demonstrating, uh, obviously printed electronics is a well-known technique. We're demonstrating how we are taking printed electronics and embedding them on the fabrics. But then you still have that problem, as I mentioned earlier, of connecting soft to hard and a wire potentially. So we looked at different methods of soldering, ultrasonic bonding or laser welding. And this here is showing that we're building those techniques and patterns around the, the process of the material, the integration, and the finalization of those connections. And this is an example of ultrasonic bonding that we're doing in-house. So at any point, the way we describe it, the textile is a textile PCB. The same way you have a hard PCB or flex PCBs, now we're doing a textile PCB. And whatever sensor that you would like to integrate on top of the textile-based sensor, the fiber-based sensors, we can embed and attach to the system through this technique. All right. but now, as someone who doesn't own an ultrasonic welding uh, device, now, what does that look like? I like I look at the connections. They look maybe somehow waterproof. Like maybe there's a, a layer of something it's, going on it's before. Very similar to like a, a press that comes down and basically for less than five seconds or a very short period of time, depending on again, I wouldn't say even time period, but depending on the base material, what your fibers you have, and what connection you need to make, you basically stamp it and it just connects it. So it's very it's very speedy. For anyone at home that's doing this, my my. First recommendation would be just do it with 
uh, with a hand, just basically uh, sew it in with a conductive yarn, or get an embroidery machine, you know, just buy one, um, and just embroider that connection. That would be the first way of getting around it. Uh, you obviously want to have a stiff connection, that's why embroidery is really helpful, because you will have a rigid area and you won't have that stretch but understanding what the mechanical properties of the fabric is in that area. So as you're wearing a garment and stretching it, you don't make a disconnect. The ultrasonic bonding will definitely ensure that you have a tight connection, but an intimate connection, since you have one rigid wire and you have a soft fabric, when you're pulling it mechanically, is all going to go on the wire, so you could even break the wire. So those are some of the intricacies that we've been working on, on the fabric structure as well, to reduce the stress at that joint. All right. This was great. This like answered all my questions and uh, and more. I'm glad we're getting on video so I can watch back and, and watch on slower speed so I can actually take it in. Uh, I'm excited to pull our our fabric off the loom over here and uh, and get on our way. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to speak with me.